Welcome everybody to the 2023 Derby Sizzy Classic One Pocket Division. This is round six, and you see on your screen two world-class players. One of many you might not be too familiar with, Alex or AKA Jerry Calderon. They flipped for the break. It looks to me like Calderon won the flip, and we're in for a treat. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. This is a race to three. Each player gets a designated pocket. First person to make eight of any balls in their pocket wins the game. Any foul will cost you a ball, meaning if you move two or more, if you scratch, if you don't get a rail, that will all cost you a ball. Alternate the break. Like I stated, if you make a ball on the break, it's a re-rack. There is a three-foul rule in effect. It rarely comes up playing one pocket. But if you scratch three times in a row, it's loss of game. Lastly, but not least, no jump cues. Now here's what I'll say about this match. It could be a short match. It could be a long match. But in my opinion, we've got two of the best movers or tactical players on the planet right here. Mr. Calderon, and I know this from experience, is probably top three smartest one pocket players on the planet. He moves so well, it's, it's kind of scary. And a lot of times he's moving and you don't realize what all he's doing to you because it looks so simple. Notice the cue ball. I point that out quite a bit. You shouldn't catch that second ball kiss as much with the cue ball out in the center because you're not hitting as much of the second ball when the cue ball's out towards the center. But he did and he scratched and he starts out owing a ball. And he's not real thrilled about it. Calderon, an emotional player. He's uh, he's an emotional player, but he's a gentleman, class act player, and he's got some class moves at the table. We all are familiar with the guy at the table, Alex Pagulayan. Also, in my opinion, probably the smartest player to play the game all the way around. Is he going into the eight here? Wow, I was a bit surprised at that. Can Calderon pocket the seven here? Looks like he can pocket the seven. At worst, he can get at the eight. Maybe some first game jitters going on I guess if Alex can't get or Calderon can't get to the 7 then he's going to go to the 8 there's a couple options here on how he wants to play this little tricky though boy it sure looks like the 7 is playable to me but I'm not at the table and this is the only angle we have, which can mislead you at times. Maybe he's concerned about getting nothing afterwards. And that's probably what will happen. But he's very good with the bridge. We are playing on a diamond table with four and a quarter inch pockets, which has tightened things up a bit. And I know the top players like it. Yeah, I was worried about that kiss. I thought he would just shoot the 8 away, missing the 10. So, a couple of errors early. Alex, very good looking over the situation I think right now he's wondering do I go to the 3 or do I go to the 14 next I think the 3 is a little bit more natural 
Is he looking at carrying the 14 off the 15 now? That would open everything up. And he can might might be able to play the cue ball between the 11 and that stripe. I think he's got to take the sure route, knock this 10 down. Uh, I like the way he played that. Yes, he is elevated over the 12, but he's opened the 13 up, which is very big to have a ball up on that side of the table. He might have to come over here and split the gap between the 9 and 2 to get on the 3. I don't know what... Okay, he's elevating. That tells me he's going to go to the 13 next. That's what he's done. But now what? Can he go forward and miss the 11? Slow spinning the cue ball to get behind the 3. Does he have to power draw through the 2 and 12? Or can he go forward and clip the 9 off the back rail? Okay, he power drew it. Came up with nothing that I don't believe of unless the 9 15 2 wired, which is pretty odd. Don't think that's going to happen. Immediately going to the 5. The key here is protection. You really need to get this cue ball in a position where Jerry can't force pressure. Well, look at this. He didn't get lucky as far as the five coming all the way back over. But boy, he played the cue ball sweet. A little stun with inside English trickling down behind the 12. What a hit. Could have got a lot more out of that, too, if he gets the right clips off the ball. Five somehow got all the way through there and back over. Calderon has immediately got his work cut out for him, but these balls are favoring him by quite some margin. Can he swerve to the 8? Or can he even see the 8? If he could get up there to the 8, that would really be nice. Okay, and that's what he's doing. This is touchy. Very touchy. Everything's doubled up. The 7 and 4 are doubled up. The 5, 6, 12 are doubled up. The 13 and 3 is doubled up. Can you kick to the 12? Softly? Sure be nice to clear that ball if you could kick to it. That's what he's done. He'll take that. He will definitely take that. That changes everything. Calderon really doesn't want to move the 15 and 11, right? The way those balls lay, so I wouldn't be surprised... If he just banks the nine straight across and sends the cue ball back up towards the eight. It's kind of a stun. Or is he going to play a tactical defensive shot? Or is he going to be ultra aggressive and go at the seven? I think he's going defense here. 
I really do like trying to just cross the nine, you know, just kind of below the six and stun the cue ball up towards the eight because you've got thir the 13 and the five and the seven as blockers. Well, this is what he's great at. That is what he is great at. Yeah, he's got Alex in a bit of a pickle right here. Alex could go forward off the two, I think. That's what he's looking at. Anything up tables detrimental. The one passes. Unless you get him behind the 13. But notice that Calderon's got him cut off from everything. Utilize the blue two. I will tell you, nobody thinks through a situation better than the young man at the table. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. I learned a shot myself there. Yes, I knew you could go through the two, but I didn't know you could go through the two utilizing an angle such as he did. What are your options? Alex, or excuse me, Jerry Calderon, is more of a passive player. He likes to move his way into an aggressive position. There's nothing wrong with that if your abilities allow you to. His abilities can get him to the shot, whereas there's a lot of players that are the opposite. They've got to stay aggressive in order to get to the shot. Notice where he put his cue. I don't know what that has to do with shooting this nine. Yeah. Look at the cue ball. I think he's got him cut off from the 6. He wanted to go into the 11 there, utilizing the 15 to cut you off from everything. Alex can see the 7, though. This will give him a good escape. Calderon catches the 11 first instead of the 15. Paggy Lyon's in trouble. thing I think he's a little concerned about is where's the seven going I don't think you have to hit it that hard I think you just really right now need to get below the four I don't see anything banking to Calderon's pocket due to the position of the 15 and 11 you might want to come all the way down which is fine get behind the three would be even better so you could carry the seven into the one Really try and tuck that cue ball up. <laughs> I wish we could get a replay of that. I don't know if anybody really noticed what he did there, but he played a kick carom. He played off of that ball. Watch this. Comes into the back of the four, playing it to his side, and then tucks the cue ball down behind the three. He did so much at one time there. It's kind of misleading to the eye, but he moved everything to his side. 
Calderon might have a similar shot coming off the bottom of the two going into the back of the four. The four might be a fraction low for it, but it's close. Very rare that that shot even comes up, let alone two shots in a row. He's looking at it. I don't know if this one's on, though. I feel like that four might be a little bit low. Okay, he tried to come into the back of the four, but just not as hard as Alex did. Got away with it. He could have bumped the 15 a little firmer, leaving Paggy Lyon straight in. Neither here nor there. I do not think Calderon's going to like his next shot. I think Paggy Lyon will two-rail this six and try and nudge, nudge him up under the three. How did he do? He doesn't want it to fall. Uh, you heard him say, I don't want it to get in. That's pretty obvious. I don't know that that got there. Calderon, being a fair player, puts his coin up. Looks to me like he owes two. Well, if that ball is not frozen, then Alex can just tap it. Or he could go behind the 12. Yeah. What? Okay. Calderon said he didn't get a rail. Let's carry on. We aren't at the table, so I would never dispute either of their decisions. You can see the people in the background. Everybody aware of the level of play here between these two guys. Very touchy shot. I don't see things getting much better for Calderon. Can Alex punch through this gap? If you're gonna go rail first, watch the eight. Okay, he's done well. Now he's got options. This is all personal preference. Do you want to punch over for the 10? Do you want to draw back up for the 5? Do you want to go forward and try and open him up? I don't think that's there's any reason to go forward and try and open the 15 up. I think he's got to punch over for the 10. The pro yeah, he said risky. And he's right. There's no point in trying to go into the 15. If you catch it wrong, it's going to cost you. I like that play. I think that's the right play. He's insured himself a shot. Now to come over for the 12. I wouldn't have a problem with him coming one rail into the three or towards the three playing the five next, but I think the 12 is the next play.
Did he overhit this? His body language tells me he didn't overhit this. This angle is all I have to work with. Railbirds TV bringing us the best they can. So he must have a shot on the five. It's a little misleading. And if that's the case, he's perfect. Because that carries an angle to the 12. Oh, he was straight. He was real straight, so he forced an angle. Now what do you do? Do you come up for the three here? I think the three's most natural. Just a touch of outside English. Touch of high right. Better to come too far than not far enough. He's done excellent. He actually decided to punch it a little bit. Peggy Lyon playing for two. Coming down. Does he have the angle to open the 15 up? Oh, he does. There you go. Playing for one. Calderon gives it to him. And Paggy Lyon takes game number one in this round six. Thank you to our sponsors, Bad Boys. Hustling USA clothing company. JB Custom Cases. Jerry Olivier, Olivier Custom Cues, and Littman Lights, the best in the biz. Neither one of these players have a loss. Calderon winning the lag is big, but it doesn't help you out if you don't crack one of Paggy Lyon's breaks. So I would say, if I'm Calderon, I'm thinking right now, I've got to do whatever I have to do to win this game and get back on track. You can't let this game slip away from you if you're called a roan. Take a two to nothing deficit going into this match. It's just not feasible. Look at the break that Paggy Lyon has put down. Wow. This is big trouble in Little China. What does the 3 2 14 6 look like? He's going to take a gander. He's also looking up table, and here's why. And he might be able to do that coming off of the 1. Notice the 12 and 10 are doubled up. The 4 is also kind of doubled up. I'd be afraid to use the 5 to do it, though. You do not want to hit any of those balls, and the 1 goes. This is haphazard. I tell you what, I know Calderon's game quite well, and that was awfully quickly played for him. I know he wanted to get to the bottom rail there. Oh. Got a good little rub coming out to even get where he got. Could have caught that stripe a little thicker and been stuck. Definitely has the combination. What does he have to follow? I don't know. Yeah, it's a little bit off angle, meaning that the eight's going to go upwards and the cue ball is going to go downward. So if he shoots this and wants to play some type of position, might need to hit it with speed. And with speed, you lose accuracy. They are pretty close together. I think he can judge it quite well. Just looking to see what he can get. 
If he's back there behind the six, he might have a better angle on this combo than I think. I feel like he's got to go to the bottom rail, though. Maybe he can draw it straight back. Okay, he went forward. That's not going to work out for him. A little surprised he didn't draw it or punch down and back versus forward. Didn't know what he thought he could get. Neither here nor there. Let's move on. see enough of the five to bring the five to his side and bury Calderon behind the 14 6 2 3 it's definitely an option sure looks like you can see enough of that I don't know what you would be risking by playing that shot I think you put your opponent in pretty bad position got to believe that Paggy Lion won't overlook that so it must not be available huh okay he's bluffing he and Roberto Gomez are two of the best bluffers in the world. They'll get you to think they're going to shoot something. They always go back to what you really think they're going to shoot. I don't think it's intentional. I think that they're just looking around, feeling it out. And that's a quality that they have. Is he looking to clip the stripe nearest the cue ball and leave, her, leave uh, Calderon long and straight on the five? I don't no. He's got to get the 12 close to his pocket if he's going to do that because you don't want to leave Calderon straight and allow him to roll down and bank this stripe. I tell you what, th this view must really have me stymied because it sure looks like he can see all of the five. And if he can, he can kill two birds with one stone, moving the five to his side, burying him behind those balls. But clearly he couldn't see the five because he put him back there anyway a different way. Actually, quite good cue ball control. He's trying to three rail that ball around tight and just clip the one, causing it to go in that top corner. Since the beginning of this match, Calderon has been on the defense pretty much. He wants to get behind that ball. I think he's going to be okay. What does the six look like? Is it wired up to Calderon's pocket? Just curious if Alex wanted to go up table, banking the one back towards his hole. Now, once again, can Paggy Lyon see the five? If he can, what's wrong with banking the five to the top left side of the table? Rolling the cue ball one rail in behind the six, three, fourteen, two. I guess that he's cut off from that ball. <laughs> if not, I would think that that's automatically what he would shoot. Because you're killing several birds with one stone. He's worried about the six being wired up. I 
I was wondering if he had the 11. Is, is the 11 available? Does he have to twist it? Yeah, he might have to twist it a little bit. Oh, he's kicking to the back of those balls. Huh. Peggy Lyon says, is it still dead? I don't know that Calderon can make a good hit, get enough out of that. The cue ball and two ball so close. He would play the two off the eight into the 14. But I think he'd have to jack straight up in the air in order to do it to get the maximum speed out of it. I don't think he can play it. Now he's looking if he kicks two rails towards the 12. Will he leave the 11? I think he's just got to bunt the 10. Does Peggy Lyon have the three ball combination? Is the six wire to call to Rome's hole? Peggy Lyon says it's close. I've got a gamble. When he says that, you know you're in trouble, typically. other. Calderon likes to do that. Pagulain likes to do it too and I think it's a fun part of the game, right? Typically when you play chess with another player it's not mute chess, is it? Gotta have some fun. At the end of the day they both want to rip each other's heads off. But sometimes a little chatter will lighten the mood. Does the 14 have him covered on the three in some sort of fashion? Oh gosh, he caught the point. No, I was concerned about the move one. Peggy Lyon said, hey, that's something new. Utilizing the point to send the three back to his side, missing the one. Calderon leaves him long and up top. I don't th think that Paguline can play the 12 straight in, but he could play it rail first if he chose. But I also can't tell if Paguline can see the three, or at least all of the three. Still concerned about the green six to Calderon's pocket. at the three I just don't know if he can see all of it if he can see all of it you could possibly stop on the three sending it two rails towards the pile but boy you risk selling out some type of a cross corner he might end up going rail first on this 12 
Is he looking to kick behind the five? Oh, this is well played. He might have left a little bit of a cut for Calderon or the combination. I think Pagulain wanted to get him a little deeper down there towards the 14. Still a pretty good hit under the circumstances. He was in a pretty bad position. Pagulain said I didn't put enough spin on it. I think you did just fine, young man. But we'll find out. Pretty evident that Calderon's got to use the two to play this combination. Therefore, he's got to cut the two a little bit. Everything's going to go to Paggy Lyon's side of the table. So he better be sure he's going to drop it. I'm afraid he thinks it might throw upwards a little bit. Not to mention, just to get a legal hit out of it, is asking a lot. Yep, Peggy Lion has one, only one, so it's no time to rush something. And I kind of like the question, right? There's nothing wrong with playing somebody and asking them what they have. Yes, it's up to you to figure out what they have. But being aware of the ball count at all times is vital. It's such an important part of the game. Calderon goes back one. But I'm wondering if what he did there is put Alex in a bad position. What I mean by that is if Alex decides to take a foul right there, is the six wired now? I've got a lot of experience playing Paggy Lion as well. I can tell you when he's talking... You're in trouble. When he's serious and quiet, you might have him. You might just have him. Well, he's not going to do that. Calderon's on the first foul, so there's nothing wrong with taking a foul back right here into the stack. But if he doesn't do that, that's what I was leading to earlier. It tells me that he's concerned about the six being wired up. I just don't understand what he can do coming off that side of the two. So he's clearly concerned about the six. What does the 15, 7, 8 look like? In other words... Coming into the edge of the 15, knocking the 8 towards your pocket, and going up in this lower left corner. Or is the 6 wired? Now he is looking at what I just said, the 15-7-8. He might just stop right there. It all depends on what the 6 is really doing. And that's what negates this entire shot. And we don't know if it's wired or not, because I don't think he knows if it's wired or not. But I don't understand coming off this side. Unless he's just going to leave him in the top left corner. 
excuse me, the bottom left corner. Oh, I feel like this is, he's not going to shoot this. Yeah, maybe he is. Well, yeah, I can't believe he tried to put inside English on that and bring it back. <laughs> he said he was trying to mass A, so maybe he wasn't trying to catch that ball on the way out. Calderon going to survey his options. I think here you've got to pocket the three and go into the 14 heavy and just try and get something to open up, get a shot on the six next. I mean, the problem with this is if you catch the 14 low, you're going to come away with possibly nothing, catch it too high. you really got to come into this 14 heavy. I think if you come in trying to play position on this bare ball, which is the 10, you're not going to get a lot. And you could get yourself in trouble trying to get position on that ball. I think the angle presents perfect to go into the 14 here. A little bit surprised at that. Does this ball go? Okay, the angle, and I apologize, very misleading to me. It clearly goes, and this is okay. Does the five go? I don't feel like the four goes. So does he kill this with inside? Well, if I were to give Calderon any weakness, and he'll admit this, we've talked about it many times, it's his ball running and ball pocketing. He plays rotation very good, but one pocket, he moves so much that it's hard for him to run the balls sometimes. And it's one of his weaknesses. And we all have weaknesses in the game. He makes up for it in the moving department. But with these guys, you've got to be able to get out. If you want to win tournaments, you have to be able to get out. Calderon does 0-1, so he has one to the good. He's got to be careful here. I mean, if he if he decides to bank this stripe clean, cue ball could get away from him. Yeah. Peggy Lyon talking about the four being dead. I don't think he's going to shoot that with the three there. I think he can follow this three. Even though the angle is a little steep, I think the 15 helps him. Is he really looking at Kicking into the two or the 14 to pocket the four? Wow. Okay, it must really be laying nice. Watch the four. Oh, the five. He said the four. I don't know that. I'd like to get a replay on that if it's possible. I don't know if it's possible. Put my team on the spot. Let's get a replay of that. Let me see the five. Okay. Yeah, he was definitely playing the five. Great replay. Thanks to Roberts TV. Definitely playing the five. So, well played and very well controlled. 
I didn't see a way to easily make the four. That's what I was curious about. He's got two options. He can play the combination or he can cut the 14. Draw back for the 14 next. That's what he's done. Everything's kind of opened up. I think the 10 even goes. Playing for five. And to take a two to nothing lead in this race to three. Yes, I would put Pagulion as a favorite. That's obvious. But I felt like this match could go either way. This is what he does. And I've learned a lot from him in my older years as far as taking my time, making sure I know what I'm doing with the everything on the table. He surveys everything. And it's great. Does he go into the balls here? If he catches the 15, it's over. Well, he didn't catch the 15. He caught the two first. That's the only risk where you didn't have to do that. Everything played prior to that as far as the 10 and the 3 and the 2. No, excuse me, the 10, the 3, and the 13. So he didn't have to take that risk. He did. He gambled. And he kind of lost. But he's okay. He's playing for 4. What's he doing here? Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to leave that stripe for Calderon to cut. Is he going to utilize the stripe for coverage? He is. But I don't know if that's any good. Calderon has to bank at this. He's got to get something going his way. He's got to make something happen for himself. I would bank this just, just all out to make it. I would not follow this ball. I would not worry about the cue ball. And he's not either, I don't think. Oh, he did follow it. Wow. Really nice hit. I didn't think he had the angle to follow through. He did. This is where he can often struggle. Let's see how he runs these balls. Here I'm thinking just come up into the 15. Well... He did what I said, and he's already in trouble. And I guess when I said come up into the 15, I kind of meant come towards the 15. Not necessarily that speed, right? Because that's what's going to happen if you catch it a little bit to the inside. So once again... Another big opportunity by the wayside for Calderon. Unless he recovers here. He can cut the 10 and avoid the side pocket with low English. He might be able to cut the 3 as well. I think the 10 is the only one that might offer another shot. Yeah, and he's, uh, I'm surprised he's actually shooting this. Tells me where his mind is at. He might have a little panic going on. He wants to get out in the center of the table there where he can play the three. He's worried about the 111 though, right? 
If he doesn't knock this 10 down, the 111 looks pretty much close to wired for Paggy Lyon. Yeah, the three looks a little high. If it was a little bit lower, I think he could two rail the cue ball out of there by cutting the three. I'm kind of surprised that he's just not two railing the seven out. Typically, Calderon's style is to play smart. Oh, he's missed this by. Oh, he miscued. Got down awful quick once he made the decision. Yeah, he definitely miscued. I feel like once he made the decision, he was down on the ball real quick and pulling the trigger real quick. Paggy Lyon needs to drop this. He's one of the best in the world with this shot. Oh, I see some body movement, but he got it down. Playing for three and a 2 nothing lead in this race to three. Round six. Big, big match for both players. Neither player has a loss. Paggy Lyon looking to torture his opponent. But this is an opportunity for Calderon, right? Like, get that three down and clear the seven. You're not out of the game by any means. You have three balls. I think you can shoot the seven rail first. Pocketing the three, clearing the seven. You can always one rail kick to the three. I don't think that's necessary. Wow. I'm absolutely surprised that he played it like that. Calderon concedes. Game number two. Probably out of a little bit of frustration. It is his break. This is a must-win game. Thank you so much. Diamond Billiard Products. Diamond Tables, the best in the business. Simona's Cloth, also the best in the business. Aramith Billiard Balls, by far the best pool ball in the world. Altsville Rack, AccuStats Video Productions, and Masters Billiard Chalk. Thank you to our sponsors. Do us a favor, like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, Railbirds TV on YouTube. Like, subscribe, hit that bell for us. They're doing everything they can to bring us wonderful content. And you can sense the frustration of Calderon. He knows that that game was uh, possibly in his grasp a couple different times. Let's let it slip away. You've got to let it go. You've got to let it go. Paggy Lyon. What is the 4, 3, 12, 10 doing? Could be the 8. Whatever dark solid that is there on top to the three boy that looks close and a lot of times that ball will get wired up he really doesn't want to have to take that chance though leading two to nothing in this match I think he's going to leave him in this lower left corner banking the 14 into the back of the 15 playing the cue ball down to the lower left corner doubling Calderon up on the five and seven We shorten it up so that tells me the 15 might not go and even if it does go it's not a hanger 
Pagulain moved a bunch to his side. Wouldn't say they settled great, but they didn't end up too bad on, on his side. Yeah, and I, I would say I believe that both of these players could win this tournament. Yes, Paggy Lyon, a little higher percentage, but Calderon is not, by any means, a dog to win this tournament. He could win it just about as good as anybody else. He's just got to shoot well. After letting that last game slip away, he's got his work cut out for him. If the 7 doesn't, excuse me, if the 15 doesn't go by the 7, he's in trouble. Because then you have to guard against leaving a bank on the 7. Yeah, and the 15 would be free if he could shoot at it. So he's elevating. Is he going to the three? No, he's going to that. He's pretty well done. He's gotten unfortunate. Note the 15 and 7, the way they finished. That's like death to a one-pocket player when something like that happens because what it allows your opponent to do is go up table with the cue ball. Therefore, he can be aggressive. Let's just say Alex could maybe two rail this nine towards the eight, three, and go up table. He could do a lot of different things now that those balls have tied up. So it's not going Calderon's way at the moment. And that's what he's done. He's two railed the nine towards the eight and three. Calderon can bank this three towards his pocket. I don't think he can make it, but he can use use the stack to cover him up. Gotta watch out to leave the return bank on the eight nine for Paggy Lion. But I feel like you've got to. Get this three close. Is he worried about leaving him the eight or nine? Probably. If he doesn't get this three close, then Paggy Lion can... Okay, he's done well. That's what he needed to do. Well, it took a big bounce. But he needed to get it in front of the pocket. But boy, it took a big bounce. And he, I think Alex can bank this nine and stop right there. Yeah. Yeah, it might lay perfect to where Paggy Line can bank this nine and stop. All depends on how he wants to hit it. Does he want to hit it with speed or does he want to hit it and hang it up? if he doesn't make it. Doesn't want to leave the off shot, meaning like the 14 off the 7. Oh, he's drawn it back. I'm a little surprised at that. I 
I'm a little surprised at how he played that because if he makes it, he's trapped himself. Huh. I guess he was in that bad of a spot. And he was in a pretty bad spot. But the angle presented incorrectly for me, so I miscalled that. I, I, I didn't see the angle as well as I thought I could. What is Calderon immediately going to? Does the 10 pass? I keep looking at the 8. Problem with that is that Pag Lion will have an escape off the 9. did pass with ease okay this is another opportunity for Calderon to run some balls and you get the sense and maybe we can all learn from this I get the sense that he talks himself out of it sometimes and I've done this a bunch in my career to where I get to running balls and they're all right there I know what I need to do and I just overlook things. I look too much. I'm looking too much. What is there to really look at? You know where you need to be. You know what you need to do. Maybe I'm talking myself out of it. Maybe he's talking himself out of it. You know, maybe we all do that at times a little too much. Maybe I'm just saying, maybe this could be, potentially, one of his downfalls when he's running the ball. Because he plays really good nine ball. Well, he's hit this great, I believe. Very nice stroke on that ball. Now, what do you do? Do you come up and try and go into the two? I think you've got to. Even if you hit it a little bad and go into the 11 and 8, you might move the two. Uh, here we go again. A little quick there, right? A little quick in that backswing. Looked to me like a stroke of uncertainty. So if there's anything he can possibly do better, it is, I think, a little bit of a commitment issue. Uh, once he commits, follow through with the shot, stay down, stay fluid. He wants to be able to move those balls, but there's a big issue with that. It's the purple four that's looming on Alex Pagulain's side of the table. I don't know what you can do here. I think he's forcing something. see anything wrong with actually just if he can see the 13 I don't know if he can see enough of it shoot the 13 and stop I guess he can't see enough of it Taking a lot of time in this situation. Could just roll on to the seven. Eight. Yeah, that was really a tough ask. I'm surprised he tried to do that once again. I'm not picking on him. We're pretty good friends, but he played that really quickly. 
right? Once he made his mind up, he looks around, looks around, looks around. Once he made his mind up, he went to the shot really quickly. Yeah. He's a very good player. Peggy Lyons got the cross corner on the seven. He's got options. He can either try and hold for the 15 or come forward for the 11. Even if he comes forward and just bumps into the bottom of the 15, he's going to have the 11, and that opens everything up to the 6. Oh, he's hit it short. Wow. And in a race to 3, this is a big reprieve for Alex Calderon. They do call him Alex. They call him Jerry. They call him Alex. He's a man of many names. He's got three balls. He's playing for five. That being said, he's looking to shoot the five. I don't know if this is the right shot. But he hit it well. Does the one pass? That's the only reason I didn't know if it was the right shot. Thought he might be able to come around, possibly using the 15. Yeah, he's really quick with his final stroke and this is typically not his game so I I don't know if the score has something to do with this if he's tired I can tell you everybody here at the Derby City Classic is tired right it's a grueling tournament therefore not picking on him at all I'm I tend to do the same thing but he's once he finds the shot he wants to shoot and, and he's ready to commit to it he's just really quick and I think that's a big cause of what's happening right now. Alex has not played a perfect match by any means. And I think that's probably the most frustrating part for Calderon. Paggy Lyon playing for six. He needs to come into this eight and 13, I believe. It's a tough hit here. Oh, the 13 plays, so he can clip the 14. Now it looks pretty good. He can go forward with a force follow here. Did he get hooked? <laughs> I think he's hooked. I can't be positive, but I think he's hooked. And all he needed was a little gap. Can he baby jump it? A little baby jump with a mass A or a twist. be surprised if he doesn't either cut the eight go at the six or play the combination I think he wants to close this match out I don't see him playing anything passive he's playing for four okay he's gonna go to cut the eight obviously a heavy favorite to pocket that ball now he's looking at the combination. Problem with the eight is the cue ball carries away from that. Well, he had to twist that in, but he knew that the cue ball wasn't going to get very high. So now he's faced with the decision of being aggressive on this 11. Problem is, is it's not free. 
I don't believe, and he knows that. Could be a little fatigue setting in with both players. He had to twist that with outside, so he knew the cue ball was going to kill. Might have hoped he could hit it a little thinner to carry the cue ball a hair higher. I think he's going to go here. Oh, he's hit it great. Playing for two and to advance into round seven of the 2023 Derby City Classic one pocket division. Paggy Lion on the eight ball. Didn't get to see Calderon's best game here. Some things just kind of slipped away from him. And I know how that feels, especially in a race to three. He's coming around three rails. It's going to end up beautiful. Alex Pagulain to move on. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for me. I am your host, Scott Frost, The Freezer. Check out Railbirds TV, and we'll see you on the next one.